Hi, I'm uh, Professor Lim Chutek, and uh, welcome to the uh, only tech demo session where we're going to show you a very interesting product called Infinity Glove. Uh, together with me is my uh, partner, uh, my partners, uh, Dr. Yo Chu Chuan and Dr. Tu Kang, who is going to actually do the demo afterwards. But before we go into the demo, uh, let me do a short present uh, presentation to uh, uh, tell you what this uh, Infinity, Infinity Glove is all about and what is the underlying technology that drives it. Uh, so what we're trying to do is to develop this Infinity Glove that we hope will become the next generation gaming control. So as you can see, it comes in the form of a glove uh, and it's able to wirelessly uh, communicate with a console for us to be able to play games, whether on the PC or a TV screen. And the underlying technology that actually drives this uh, Infinity Glove is actually this very humble looking, very tiny little 1D sensor. And this sensor basically uh, consists of a, a soft uh, polymer tube. Uh, it, it can be as small as a strain of hair. Uh, and inside it, we actually fill it with this uh, liquid metal called uh, E-gain, which stands for eutectic gallium idium. So the whole tube itself is actually conductive, yet very stretchable. So as you can see from this slide, uh, we can actually stretch it to four times its length. In fact, it's so small that you can hardly see it. So from this movie itself, if you were to wear it, you can hardly see it unless you use a magnifying glass uh, to look at this very small uh, 1D uh, microfiber sensor. In fact, we could even be able to string this through an eye of a needle. So that's how small this microfiber sensor is. And basically, this fiber has very interesting characteristics. It's about one to two times the outer diameter, uh, uh, one to two times the, the strain of the hair. So the outer diameter is about 0.25 millimeters. It's about three to four times stretchable, and, and also we can tune the sensitivity to make it very sensitive or less sensitive. And certainly when we weave it into a fabric, it is also washable uh, as well. So we have found several patterns to, to protect this technology. But let me just show you through this movie how stretchable it is. And by just pulling this microfiber sensor, we are able to actually be able to measure the amount of force uh, that we can stretch it. And because it contain, consists of this uh, liquid metal inside it, so once we stretch it, it displaces this uh, liquid metal. And when you pass a small current through it, we are able to measure this electrical signal change. So from this electrical signal change, we then are able to work out how much force we have been used to stretch this uh, microfiber. In fact, we also weave it in, into this fabric or even a bandage. And by just stretching this, this fabric itself, you can see that we can also be able to continuously measure the amount of force uh, that's been stretched to this fabric. Uh, in fact, when we start to release it, the force will actually start to go back to zero uh, once we, we, we remove the force. So, so with this uh, technology that we have, uh, we started to look at what are the different applications. So there are a number of them, as you can see from this slide, uh, it includes rehabilitation, using it to uh, be able to measure uh, or monitor vital signs. Uh, we have also been able to use it to do healthcare training, in particular in a VR or virtual reality environment. Uh, the other interesting application is respiration monitoring pulse measurement, and also being able to use it to weave it into a fabric for smart fitness tracking. So let me just show you uh, uh, four examples. Uh, one is in terms of rehabilitation. So again, you can see this is just one very tiny fiber that's uh, placed on this kinesiology tape, and it's then mounted onto the kneecap. So when the person starts to bend the knee, we are able to measure very accurately and in a very quantitative way how much bending the person has been executing and how fast and how slow. In fact, this can also be used not only for sports, but also rehabilitation where the, uh, the, the nurses, for example, can allow the person to perform the, the exercise by himself or herself and thereafter be able to look at the records to see how much uh, uh, bending of the knee the person has executed and whether there's improvement in terms uh, of, of the bending of the knee. The other interesting uh, technology is where we weave it into a strap. And uh, from here, as you can see, once we strap it, uh, we are able to use this sensor to be able to actually measure not only the uh, heart rate, but also the, the pulse shape. In fact, pulse shape is very important because that is also one way where you can determine uh, the, uh, whether a person has certain uh, disease, uh, diseases arising from the change in the pulse shape. So you can see we can very accurately, using this very small fiber, be able to measure this, this, this pulse shape itself. The other area is, again, 
is pulse monitoring, but what, what we did was we weave this very single, very tiny fiber into the tip of a glove. And then what we do is we can place it, for example, on the inner elbow. So again, from here, we can measure the bronchial pulse monitoring. So this is literally measuring pulse uh, at different parts of the body. Uh, we can also be able to uh, use this uh, fiber, uh, this micro uh, fiber sensor, and then place it at our wrist. So this is called radii pulse monitoring. And again, uh, we are able to measure the, the heart rate as well as pulse shape. In fact, whenever I give talks, for example, in China, people are asking whether we can use this to pao mai, you know, uh, which is for, for traditional Chinese medicine. Again, when we put it to a, to a neck, we are again able to, to also measure pulse shape. And one of the interesting things we did was to put it near the, the uh, foot where we measure the cellist paddies monitoring. And this is in particular very useful for patients suffering from uh, diabetics uh, uh, where there is uh, a poor profusion of uh, uh, blood into the micro uh, uh, vesicles inside the, the, the feet itself. The other interesting application we uh, that we came up with was to weave this into this, this fabric material and then place it uh, near the, the, the chest. And from here, as you can see, we can actually measure respiration rate as well. So, uh, so from here, uh, this is again another very interesting application. For example, it can also be used for babies, uh, in particular monitoring their sleep, uh, as there are you know cases where baby may actually suffer from sudden death because they were, they weren't able to, uh, for example, uh, shift uh, when they uh, have their face uh, face down onto the mattress. So these are some very interesting applications we have come up with. But the one that I want to showcase and we're going to demo afterwards uh, is the Infinity Glove. I'm not sure whether you have watched this interesting movie called Minority Report, where Tom Cruise actually used this pair of gloves to be able to manipulate or, or be able to call out information on the screen and use it to, to, to uh, uh, retrieve uh, all these interesting images. So we ourselves have also come up with what we call a Smart Infinity glo Glove. So in this pair of gloves is where we weave our sensors into it. Uh, we call it Infinity Glove, partly not because there's a movie, you know, Avengers, where they have an Infinity Gauntlet, but actually the reason why we call it Infinity, Infinity Glove is that this glove itself has so many multiple uh, applications, numerous applications, plus uh, each finger can actually uh, be able to use for uh, uh, a different control. So let me show you how, how it looks like. So, so in this Infinity Glove, we actually weave our microfiber sensors into the finger part of the glove. So we incorporate these stretchable sensors. Because it's so tiny, it can be very easily uh, and seamlessly integrated into the thin fabric. So it makes this glove very ultra thin, very lightweight and very soft. As compared to commercial gloves, which are almost like a, you know, like a motorbike glove, which is very bulky and heavy. But for our glove, it's actually very comf uh, comfortable to wear. Let me show you a movie uh, about uh, describing what this glove is all about. So there you go, what we have developed is a smart glove for both gaming and rehab. We hope that through this smart glove, we can redefine gaming experience, uh, experiences, uh, as well as enable very accurate motion tracking uh, for patients who are, have to go for rehabilitation. In fact, 
uh, patients can actually use this at home and perform rehabilitation rather than go to a hospital to do it. Uh, so, so this Infinity Glove for gaming uh, not only has the features of being very comfortable to wear, it's also very stretchable and very precise. And we hope that through this, we can redefine gaming experiences. So this is me, actually a non-gamer, be able to actually pick it up and use this uh, 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 smart Infinity Glove uh, very quickly without really uh, need to have, uh, require a long time to actually be able to learn how to use it. And in fact, uh, earlier speaker was talking about robotics. Uh, we have also been able to demonstrate that we can use this Infinity Glove for robotics control as well. Uh, and this is actually very useful in particular if you want to have a robotics operating in a very hazardous environment, like in very high radioactive environment or in an infectious disease ward. Uh, so as you can see, using this glove from a distance, uh, we are able to actually control the fingers of a robotic hand. Uh, so through this, we are able to uh, confer a dexterity uh, to the robotic hands uh, from a distance. Uh, for example, someone who is outside an infectious ward and, and the robots can be inside to perform certain tasks where it will be too dangerous for the person to be inside the environment to do it. So we have been very fortunate to, to be featured in a number of uh, media, uh, uh, media as well as uh, winning number of awards as well. If you're interested, you should also uh, look, uh, uh, view this particular CNA documentary on Game Nation uh, on the China News Asia. So as I mentioned, uh, we actually has already commercialized this technology under a NUS startup company called Microtube Technologies. And the co-founders are myself, uh, Dr. Yo Chu Chuan and Dr. Uh, Yu Long Ten. And of course, we are now uh, in the process of uh, you know, developing this glove and commercializing it and hopefully being able to get it out uh, for use uh, by the public very soon. So with that, I've come to the end of my talk. And uh, over here are some uh, information if you need to know more. Uh, feel free to actually visit our website. And so I'll, so I'll, I'll link in, uh, or, uh, link, uh, you can actually uh, contact us through our linking uh, account as well. So I'm going to now pass this time to Dr. Yu Chu Chuan, who is going to do the demo. Thank you, Professor Lim. Hi, everyone looking at us uh, via Zoom. My name is Dr. Yu Chu Chuan, and I am one of the co-inventors of the technology, and as well as the, one of the co-founders of the NUS spin-off Microtube Technologies. Together with me is Dr. Du Kang, who will be demonstrating to you our Infinity Glove live via Zoom. So if you have any questions during the game or if you have any questions uh, for the presentation just now, please feel free to write it on the chat and we will try to answer as many questions as we can uh, along with the demonstration. So let us now take a look at the demonstration. Um, from the video, you can see the Infinity Glove and the microfiber sensors are embedded within the fingers of the cotton glove. So this looks and feels like an ordinary fabric glove and we have a controller on the glove that sends the data to the PC. And on the screen, you should see a computer game. This is the mini game that is built on the Unity game engine where we will simulate going around the bloodstream to kill the virus particles. And this game can be loaded on a PC or an Android phone or even a gaming console. So um, Dr. Tukang will start playing the game now. And here we have here, we are simulating a first person shooting game uh, where we can first pan left and right by moving our wrists or uh, move our arm to look up or down. So to advance forward, the user can extend his thumb and to move backwards, the user can flex his thumb. Okay, so uh, let's go and shoot some particles now. Um, so as we look at, aim at the particle, we can now flex the index finger to fire a bullet and to kill the particles. Next, we can also temporarily pause the game by clenching the fist. Uh, Dr. Dukan can clench the fist. So uh, with this clenching of fist, the user can either rest his hand on the table or adjust his hand position uh, before he continues with the game. And in the future, we intend to incorporate more advanced finger gestures, such as moving both thumb and index finger to open up a map or making an okay gesture to go to the menu. 
So uh, with this, uh, we essentially we can create virtually infinite number of gaming commands with different uh, gaming uh, finger gestures. And this is also why one of the reasons we name our glove as Infinity Glove. So as we continue to watch um, Dr. Tukang uh, in his game, I will also pause for a while to see if there's other any questions to be answered. Okay. Okay, there's one question here. So question uh, is, how would haptics be incorporated into the glove for better tactile control of remote uh, robotic hand? Um, and I think this is a very excellent question. Um, one of the key um, elements that is included, um, not just for sensing, but also for actuating. Um, so uh, while we are able to sense the finger movements, uh, we should also be able to have a actuation to feel what the robot feels. So um, our in our research directions, we are also looking at incorporating um, soft robotics into our glove so that we can have a haptic feedback or even a vibro motor to have a haptic feedback so that when the robot captures a hard object or a soft object, this sensing feedback can also be related to our hand as a, as a form of feedback. Okay, I think there's two more questions. <laughs> so the second question is, when can I buy an Infinity Glove? For how much? Um, so uh, as, I'm, as we mentioned, we are on the process of commercializing the Infinity Glove. We have the spin-off that uh, looks into large-scale uh, manufacturing of this Infinity Glove. And we, we do hope that we can have this launched um, as early as end of the year. Um, as for the price, um, so one of the key value proposition we have is that our materials for the Infinity Glove is really cheap. Um, it's uh, comparable to all the existing gloves that is market, uh, in the market. And uh, we do hope to expand this to as many users as we can. And we hope to put it as a, at a price level that is uh, very suitable for, um, all, for the mass market. Um, so it will be something that is very similar to your, the price of a gaming console or a gaming controller. Um, question three, um, happy to see your recent successful innovation. Congratulations. Are there any entrepreneurial com communities or ideation labs where students can find resources to kickstart their own smart project? Um, thanks thanks uh, for the comments and compliments uh, for, for this person. Um, um, I just want to take this opportunity to, to mention that, yes, definitely, um, NUS is one of the uh, places that you can find a lot of entrepreneurship resources and, and communities um, to to kickstart your own company or your smart or your project, uh, one of the uh, direction that you can go to is NUS Grip. Uh, that is NUS Graduate Research Innovation Program, uh, where you can propose um, projects and as well as you can also um, partner with other people to solve challenges um, that is um, being posted on on the on the program there. And, and with this program, you can also have resources to, to ideate your, your, your uh, project and, and to spin off um, and commercialize your idea. Um, so question four, what could be the potential use cases of the gloves in medical and military areas? Yes. Um, so we have been speaking to uh, many different clinicians now, uh, as well as um, personnel from the uh, police force, as well as the military areas. Um, uh, the One of the things, as what um, Professor Lim has mentioned, is that uh, we are able to use this glove for hazardous situations where, uh, especially in this COVID-19 situation, uh, we do not want uh, to be exposed to 
um, the hazardous situations such as infections uh, areas, uh, we can have a robot that is being controlled by our glove uh, to to uh, manipulate uh, and to uh, interact with the infectious patients. Um, in, the, in terms of military, um, there are a few applications as well. Uh, one of the most uh, instant uh, idea that we have uh, together with uh, our partners is to uh, help in the bomb disposal unit uh, where we can have uh, thing robot that um, moves as exactly as what our fingers does and we can use this dexterity to um, this to uh, diffuse the bomb at a safe distance away. Um, so, so I think there are really many areas that we can look into with this uh, invention. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, again, thank you once again for having us, um, and uh, wish you a good afternoon.